All right, everybody, today is going to be pretty packed. Um, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to go to the library, and I'm going to let some students choose books if they want to. Um, and Ms. Adams is going to talk a little bit about what your, um, what your book project will be for the six weeks. So make sure to ask me some questions about that when you get back. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some literary terms, and it's going to be irony. And we have three different types of irony that you need to know. And if we have time, we're going to go ahead and start the necklace in class. Otherwise, that will be homework. And there's a quiz on Canvas over the necklace for whatever we don't get finished reading. And that quiz is due Wednesday by 11.59 p.m. And there are, um, I believe, six multiple choice questions and one short answer. All right, so in your literary term section, please write down the following. Again, in your literary terms section, please write down the following. So the first question is, what is irony? Okay, so the, the formal definition is, it's a contrast or difference between the appearance or expectation of something and the reality of that thing. Now that's just, we expect one thing to happen and something else happens instead. That is your generic term for irony. But then there are different types. And this is where we really start breaking it down because um, for most of you guys, you know, I, I can hear you, some of your thoughts going, well, we've learned about irony in the past. Yes, you have. I, and I hope you have because that means, you know, your, your previous teachers were doing what they were supposed to be doing and, and I'm glad. Um, but as you get into more complex literature, you start looking at different variations of irony. And that's kind of where that, that um, pre-AP and AP distinguish comes in, distinguishing, distinguishment comes in. So there's verbal irony, there's dramatic irony, and then there's situational, situational irony. So the first one is, what is verbal irony? Verbal irony is the contrast between what is said and what is meant. Typically, um, students can grasp onto the idea of sarcasm as being verbal irony. It's a form of verbal irony. So if somebody says to you something like, nice going, Einstein, Typically, you don't even need to know the, the tone. You don't even have to hear the tone. And you get that they really weren't trying to be kind to you. They are kind of making fun of you. So they weren't trying to give you a compliment. They gave you a backstab instead. Um, so even though it says that, it doesn't mean it is. Um, some people would say that verbal irony might be those insincere apologies that you might give. Um, like if you ever get in a fight with your brother or sister and your mom says, well, you need to apologize and you look at your brother or sister and you say, I'm sorry. And you really don't mean that you're sorry. You just kind of say that you're sorry just so that you can say you did. Um, it's pretty insincere. So you say it, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily very genuine. It's not what's, what is meant. Next one is dramatic irony. And I know you guys are experts at this one. Even if you don't know the terminology that goes along with it, you know dramatic irony. It's what, um, in literature, movies, um, in life, it's a contrast between what the character thinks to be true and what the reader knows to be true. It's one of those situations that, as an audience, we're sitting there going, we know something you don't know, to the character. Um, it could be something like a scary movie, and you know that there's somebody hiding in you know, the, the closet or something, and you're like, don't go by the closet. And of course, the character always goes by the closet. But we know that he's there but the character doesn't. Um, it could also be something like if you're watching some drama, you know, it used to be soap operas, um, and like one of the characters is thinking that, um, you know, their best friend is like very sincere and very true, but we know that the best friend is actually, you know, smooching this person's boyfriend on the side. So that's dramatic irony. It's something we know that the character does not know. And that's, that's we see a lot in literature and movies. And then there's situational irony. It's a contrast between what happens and what was expected to happen. Um, there's a Toby Keith video out there if you want to YouTube it. Um, basically, it's called It's a Little Too Late. And it's, um, it's kind of a spoof off of an Edgar Allan Poe short story, Cask of Amontillado. And uh, basically, he's trying to, to wall up his, his girlfriend. He's mad at her and, you know, it's, it's supposed to be funny and he, he's, got her wall, or he's, he's putting up this brick wall, and in the end, 
we find out he traps himself rather than actually walls her up. But anyway, you could YouTube that if you have a little bit of time. Um, it's actually a pretty decent video, but, um, and if you know Cask of Amontillado, you'll catch the illusion. All right, so these are just some examples of irony that we found on the internet that we thought were kind of clever. We have your missing poster. You, we expect it to be there, and then, of course, the missing poster is missing. Invisible tape, but it's color invisible tape. Um, we got some, some wire cutters that are actually chained up. Do not erase things off the board. Doing so will result in, and we don't know. So we expect it to not be erased, but it is erased. That's irony. Temporary airbrush brush tattoos that last forever. But wait a second, they're temporary. So that doesn't work. Help protect the American elm. And yet they're cutting down the American elm. School spelt incorrectly. Not good. Um, and then this one is sure we can, but obviously they can't. So we got a little situational irony going on there. And then why don't you go ahead and take a left-hand turn, but don't take a left-hand turn, according to the sign. And this one, um, this is your weekly pack, because nowadays there are only six days in the week, I guess, according to V8. It should be seven, of course. And then you have your American Aviation, learn to fly here, and you have the plane up in the tree. And then the fire truck that's on fire. So you got a little bit of some, some irony there. And then a raid can that has some bees on it. That really didn't help. So anyway, so those are that, or those are some examples. And um, in class, what we're going to do is we're going to go through these different types. So we have to decide if it's verbal, dramatic, or situational. So in the sixth sense, um, Bruce Willis' character thinks he's helping a troubled boy with the trauma of supposedly seeing dead people. When in actuality, he himself is dead, and the boy instead helps us or helps ends up helping him. So you have to decide what that's going to be. And most people would say that's dramatic because we ex we know that he's dead, but the boy does not, or but Bruce Willis does not. So um, the little boy actually is like, uh, you're the one who's dead, but then we find out at the end, so that's kind of where that twist is. In an argument with your mother who reprimands you for being quote unquote smart, smart you apply sarcastically. If you think I'm smart, then why won't you let me make smart decisions? What type of irony is this? And we could argue that this is verbal irony because smart really doesn't mean smart and you're actually kind of using smart in a little snotty tone if you're talking like that. You stay up all night cramming for your big final. When you show up the next day to take it, you find out the test is actually next week. What kind of irony is this? And that is considered situational irony because we expect one thing and then the situation calls for a totally different thing. A breaking news report says that a fire has broken out at the fire station. What type of irony is this? Again, we have situational irony. Darla from the soap opera All My Problems is pregnant. Her husband Derek believes that he is the father, but the audience knows that Darla has been having an affair with Bruce and that he is the baby's really real father. What type of irony is this? And since we already know that the affair is going on, we know something that poor, who would be Derek, does not know, then that would be dramatic irony. Okay, so now we take that, those concepts, the irony concepts, and we apply that to the short story, The Necklace. And um, it's a really cool story. I mean, it's, it's got a pretty ironic twist going on in there, so make sure that you read it all the way to the end and start looking for hints and foreshadowing so that... Um, the ironic twist will play a little bit heavier role. Um, but to kind of get you started, think about questions like this. Um, do you agree or disagree with this? Lying is acceptable in some situations. You should lie to save face. Life sometimes hands you cruel situations. The best thing to do when this happens is to keep your suffering to yourself and figure out a way to get by. Material goods are extremely important to being happy. So think about those questions. Um, and then you know, we'll have a class discussion about it. So if you weren't here, then you missed out on a really good discussion, I'm sure. And then what we're going to do in class is we're going to start the necklace if we have time. If not, then we'll have to be reading it at home. And the link is on my Canvas site. Or you can just do a search for the necklace short story. You'll find tons of places you can, you can get the full text. Um, so we're going to read the necklace, 
and then go to Canvas and take the quiz that covers irony. And so all those questions, um, they are not comprehension questions. They're all focused on irony. And so um, go ahead, and, and I don't care if you use the story while you're taking the quiz. It does not bother me one bit. If, I, if that bothered me, I wouldn't be putting it out on Canvas. And then make sure that you have that done by uh, 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, one other thing about the quiz I want to make sure that you know is that um, there is a short answer, so make sure that you complete that appropriately. And um, thank you for doing your work, and I appreciate it. Talk to you later.